arrested for attempting to bribe Anambra commissioner. More Anambra residents loud Governor Soludo on road infrastructure. Synod, Bishop Ekwe asked FG to tackle social economic challenges facing Nigeria. And on the foreign scene, Ukraine war, Human Rights Watch says Kyiv used ban landmines. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Soludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. Good evening and welcome to ABS Evening News. My name is Chinyere Ikeoreke. A woman and her husband have been arrested for attempting to bribe Anambra State Commissioner for Women Affairs and Social Welfare, Ifi Obinabo, with two million naira to enable the woman continue running facilities where underage guests are being forced into sex slavery. Correspondent Joseph A. Watcher gathered that the suspect, Mrs. Ebera Amaka Okonkwa, who hails from Otolo Newe, operated as Madam Padded while in the Newe and later relocated to Oba, where she operated as Uku Venza. His details. While at Newe, the woman was said to be collecting money for the services the girls rendered to men at her brothel. And on one occasion, three girls she locked inside a room to prevent them from meeting men and collecting money at her back were born to death. Police preliminary investigation then, however, revealed that the suspect, Mrs. Okonkwo, was a bar owner and that the three victims who lost their lives were waiters in the restaurant and bar joint, not prostitutes as alleged. Accusing fingers were also pointed at the woman over a video that went viral recently in which underage girls were found at a brothel in Oba with some visibly pregnant. Narrating the incident, Mrs. Obinabo explained that the suspect went into hiding after the Oba incident but later resurfaced through her husband through whom she offered to bribe the commissioner with 2 million naira with initial payment of 300,000 naira to water ground the deal. She said that after informing relevant authorities about the bribe offer, she played along with the woman and her husband as instructed and later met them outside the state where they were eventually arrested. The Women Affairs Commissioner who stated that the matter will be charged to court upon completion of police investigation appealed to people doing similar jobs in the state to desist forthwith, warning that the governor Chukwu Masoludo's administration is determined to extinguish such evil practice. She also stated that the woman suspect will be used to get the girls at the Oba brothel for necessary rehabilitation. <laughs> Government, Meanwhile, the suspect who gave her name as Chomo Keke denied running a brothel with underaged girls. Moving in and out of Obi Okoli by Club Street Junction will no longer be an issue for commuters following construction and expansion of road by Anambra State Government. Was correspondent Ngozi Obileri monitored condition of the road in this raining season and reports. Movement in and out of Club Street Junction by Obi Okoli Road was a nightmare to road users due to gridlock and traffic jam they experience on daily basis in the area. Up until this month, no one believed that the area would be spacious and wide to contain any volume of traffic on the road without the commuters stressing themselves. When ABS arrived the site, large drainages have been completed across the road and on both sides of the road, giving room for free flow of flood water. Speaking on the development, a tricycle driver, Mr. Uchenna Omubiko, said, that they never knew that the road can be this wide until recently, noting that the quality of work done on the road was unprecedented. Mr. Mubiko applauded Governor Chukuma Soludo for the provision of road infrastructure 
across the state and said that they have not had it this good as according to him the issue of traffic jam on the road has become a thing of the past on his part mr lucky ojai businessman in oka said he is happy that the governor is out to make a difference noting that for this and many more achievements the governor should have the support of every onyanambra i hope to pray for and we also thank our governor for whatever thing that he's doing to see that the people of the state are living in Amor. in oka I am Ngozi Obileri for ABS News. A member of the 7th Anambra State House of Assembly that represented Newi South 1 constituency, Honorable Sonny Ozobialo, has built a new health center for Obodi community in the Newi South local government area to give them access to quality health care. The health center, which is the constituency's project of the legislator for the community, has been inaugurated and handed over to the vice president of Obodi Development Union, Mr. Somadina Ezechuku, for use. House of Assembly correspondent Chukwe Mekamodelimo now reports. Speaking after inauguration of the health facility, Honorable Ozobialo explained that he cited the facility in the community to bring solution to healthcare needs of the people as they go to their neighboring communities to assess healthcare. The legislator disclosed that pregnant women of the community who used to deliver their babies at Amiji or so many that have closest healthcare facilities will now do that at the healthcare center and commended Governor Chukwu Masoludo for providing the funds that enabled him to accomplish the project. Government property we know, but it's being put in place for their own use. They should secure the facility, protect the properties. In his remarks, the Transition Committee Chairman of Newe South Local Government Area, Mr. Ikenna Aniaboso, who applauded Honorable Ozobialo for completing a project he started even when he had left office, announced that healthcare workers have been posted to the facility, assuring that other facilities that are not there will be put in place so that anybody who goes there will get quality healthcare. The local government chairman also told the gathering that the local government council is making arrangements to get some of their stakeholders to pay for health insurance of the community dwellers so that they could assess quality health care at the health center free of cost. The legacy, it is manifest before us within four years. Within four years. And with every sense of gratitude and i say thank you, thank you. Thank you. that you have brought soccer to the needs of Ndi on his part the vice president of obodi development union mr ezechuku described the project as the most pressing need of the community and assured that they will take full ownership of it to prevent vandalization <laughs> The chairman of All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA, for Ekulumili Ward, Mr. Thomas Okoye, noted that Honorable Ozobialo has written his name on the sands of time by building the health center. From Obodi, Chukwemeka, Mordelem, ABS News. Two students of Queen of Rosary Secondary School, QRC Onicha, Chudema Okoye and Basilia Elochuku, have emerged the first and second winners of the grand finale of the 2022-2023 OCI Foundation's Anambra Health Campaign Schools Challenge, AHCSC, the health quiz competition, which is for all public schools in Anambra State was organized by OCI Foundation in conjunction with the Post Primary School Service Commission, PPSSC OCA. This year's competition, which is the second edition held at Igwebike Grammar School OCA, attracted students, teachers, and officials of OCI Foundation. Queen Anibogo filed the report. 
Ghana Braham our Youth Health Campaign Schools Challenge is a statewide quiz competition designed to enhance engagement with the OCI Foundation's Am Our Youth Aroid Health Campaign, an anti-cancer program endorsed by the USA's Harvard Medical School and World Health Organization. With the first edition held in 2021-2022, the AHCS is expected to become a national campaign to ensure that no one is left behind in any part of Nigeria. The contestants were drawn from the six educational zones of Anambra State, while the moderator is the principal of Redeemer's High School, Obuno, Mrs. Ada Adibe. In his keynote address, the president and founder of OCI Foundation, Dr. Chris Ifedora, said the day marked another important milestone in consolidating the history that the foundation made over three years ago, which delivered on their promise to ensure that teachings against breast and cervical cancers were introduced into the regular curriculum of all senior secondary schools in Anambra State. Dr. Ife Diora, represented by Barrister Vivian Obimwa, explained that OCI Foundation believes that all senior secondary schools in Anambra State should be part of the Aroy Health Campaign, urging the PPSSC Education Commissioner and Governor Chuku Masoludo to help get it done. That teachings against breast and cervical cancers were introduced into the curriculum, regular curriculum, of all senior secondary schools across Anambra State. Today's event not only celebrates the success we have had on this project over these years, but also rewards the students, teachers, and schools that have steadfastly adhered to and excelled in these teachings. The chairman on the occasion Lady Joy Olasi said what the students have learned in the course of the competition, if stepped down, will reduce the cancer scourge in the society, even as she advised parents to discipline their children against getting involved in premarital sexual activities. I am proud of you. It means that you got something from us here. And uh, if you want to end here, so all these questions to answer, you keep it in mind and then when you go back, you tell the other students what you learned today. It will not end here. The winner, Ms. Okoye, her take-home lesson from the competition is that hard work pays. While Ms. Elochuku noted that the competition gave her access to information about cancers that she was not privy to before now. My take-home lesson today for this competition is that hard work pays. When you strive hard, when you put more effort to do something, know that success is yours. And I want to tell you that why working? Why achieving success or aiming for success? Always add up these ingredients, success and hard work, which will give us what we want. I want to thank them for, at least, this has enlightened me, enlightened me based on cervical and breast cancer. The winner of the first edition of the quiz, Ms. Treasure Godwin, who is now an undergraduate of Applied Microbiology, Namda Zikiwe University, Oka, said OCI Foundation has been an encouragement to her and assured the contestants that self-encouragement is the best. In a vote of thanks, the Domestic Liaison Officer of the Foundation, Mrs. Imelda Emeka, recalled the genesis of the Foundation, the challenges encountered, and appreciated God and all that contributed in making the event a success. Presentation of prizes, welcome song, and dance drama formed high points of the competition. Queen Anibuogo, ABS News. The Transition Committee Chairman of Anoocha Local Government's area, Mr. Gerard Ozo, has reaffirmed his resolve towards supporting quality education in the area through provision of basic amenities and conducive environments. Mr. Ozo gave the assurance when he flagged off a borehole project and also commissioned a cis classroom block facilitated by Chief Martins Ekwe at Community Primary School at Daziani. Valentin Baduga, further report taken from here. 
Performing the function, Mr. Ozo said that the borehole project was cited in the school to serve the students, teachers, and people around, noting that good water has a great impact on healthy living. Mr. Ozo encouraged the school to ensure good management of the facility for sustainability. He thanked Governor Tuku Masoludo for empowering him to execute the project and assured to continue working in line with the developmental policies and programs of the present government in Anambra State. Mr. Ozo, while inaugurating the classroom block, commended the benefactor, noting that the gesture is in line with the public community private partnership philosophy of Governor Soludo and called on the people of the community and our nurture in general to get involved in building a better future. The governor introduced the ideal of BCPP, public community private partnership, whereby the government will bring, the private sector will bring, and the community as a whole will also bring. That is a collaborative effort. Government cannot do it alone. So we thank the philanthropists that have done so far. We are asking others to come and write their name in gold. The President General of Adaziane Town Union, Barrister Ike Chuku Ezechuku, and the Manager of Community Primary School Adaziane, Reverend Father Michael Oguno, while expressing joy over the project, thanked the state government and other benefactors and promised their cooperation to ensure the completion of the Boho project. Even day when we gave a double celebration, all hand on your tata, everybody saw something on the I had a happy new hand from my start. Now, I have to go more and more. Now, I have to go to the bridge. 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 The project is expected to be completed within three weeks. Still to come on the news tonight, Synod Bishop Ekwe asks. FG to tackle social economic challenges facing Nigeria. Ukraine war, human rights watch says Kyiv used banned landmines. Here's a special message again. Governor Chukuma Suludu has come for a total turnaround maintenance of Anambra State's economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. Stay with us. A peak protein breakfast gets worked for a great day. How do I know? Because my daddy goes to his work feeling good and always with a smile. Mommy is always filled with confidence. My sister is always in tune. And for me, learning new things becomes absolute fun. That's because all day and every day, the peak goes on. Start your day with a peak protein breakfast peak. Reach for your peak. Welcome back. And if you're just joining us, you're watching ABS Evening News. The Bishop, Anglican Diocese of Niger West, Right Reverend Johnson Ekwe, has called on the federal government to address the unbearable challenges facing the people by putting measures in place to mitigate their sufferings. Bishop Ekwe made the call while presenting his bishop's charge to the first session of the Fifth Synod, Diocese of Niger West, head at St. Michael's and All Angels Anglican Church in Vitea Glory, Anambra East local government area. Staff reporter, the synod with the theme in this sign, Conquer, attracted government officials, including Anambra State Governor Professor Chukuma Suludo, Speaker Anambra State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Somto Udeze, Member representing Idemli South and the State Assembly, Mr. Ibuka Iwe, host of bishops and clergy across the country among other dignitaries. Presenting his address, Bishop Ekwe regretted, Bishop Ekwe regretted that hardship in the land, high cost of living, constant strike action undermining the education system, poor electricity supply amid frequent hike in tariff, insecurity, effects of subsidy removal, delayed infrastructures, among other challenges, are making life unbearable for the citizens. Bishop Ekwe applauded the good efforts of the state government in combating the unprecedented security challenges which have bedeviled Nigeria in general and commended the efforts of various communities in complementing the state government's security details by providing support for voluntary security vigilantes and listed some of the achievements of the diocese within the Synod year, thanking God for his blessings upon the diocese despite the economic hardship in the country. Today, God, through his words in the future passages, has given us assurance of our victory. We are to meditate and assimilate these passages as they are the believers' weapons 
for victory. Micah chapter 5, verses 9 to 10. Speaking, the Archbishop, province of the Niger, and Bishop, Anglican Diocese of Oka, Most Reverend Alexander Bezin, commended Bishop Ekwe for his evangelical work in the diocese, saying that the theme of the Synod is significant as some people are wearing cross without knowing the meaning and power of the cross. Governor Soludo, represented by the Commissioner for Local Government and Chieftaincy Matters, Mr. Tony Collins, Mwabwane, appreciated the fruitful relationship of the church with the government and urged the church to intensify their prayers for the government. This bishop's charge is to conquer. And that's what um, the solution movement is all about, to conquer Anambra, to make Anambra believable and more prosperous. So we are having a cordial relationship. The relationship between the church and the government will partner together while the church helping in educating the people, especially in a place of worship, trying to tell them, um, trying to preach to them on ways to go and how to Behave. The Bishop, Anglican Diocese of Amich, Right Reverend Ephraim Ikako, and that of Afibu, Right Reverend Paul Udogo, noted that the theme of the Synod is significant to Christians, as without the cross, Christianity is meaningless. In their separate remarks, the host vicar, Venerable Emmanuel Onovo, Clerical Synod Secretary, Venerable Charles Chukura, and the chairman, Synod Central Planning Committee, Barrister Mike Ikebunam, thanked God for the success of the Synod and urged the delegates to take the message of the Synod to their different churches to ensure its fruitfulness. From St. Michael and All Angels Anglican Church, Ipita Aguleri, Njideka Okoye, ABS News. On the foreign scene, Human Rights Watch says it has uncovered new evidence of Ukrainian forces indiscriminate use of banned interpersonal landmarks. Former U.S. President Donald Trump says the Russian president has been somewhat weakened by the aborted mutiny and it is time for peace talks. European Union leaders reaffirm their long-term commitment to bluster U Ukraine's security at a summit in Brussels. Ukrainian prosecutor charged a Russian politician and two suspected Ukrainians with war crimes over the alleged deportation of orphans from Kassin. The President's Mother's Union, Women's Guide and Girls' Guide, Ecclesiastical Province of the Niger, Mrs. Marthy Bezimu says the nation has come to its lowest point in history with enormous challenges facing its economy security and unity. Mrs. Ibezimu, who is also the President Mothers Union, Women's Guide, Girls Guide and the Young Mothers Association, Diocese of Oka, stated this while delivering her presidential address at the 37th Oka Diocesan Women's Conference and Second Women's Guide Conference going on at St. Stephen's Church, if you do know, do know Kofia Council area. Correspondent Amaka Chubuzokoye report. The conference, which is a four-day event, has its team as you shall eat the fruit of your labor. I the Archbishop, Ecclesiastical Province of the Niger, and Bishop, Diocese of Oka, the Most Reverend Alexander Ibezim, the clergy, wives of Archbishops and Bishops from other dioceses, delegates, and many others who came to felicitate with Oka Diocese and Ifitedunu Anglican community. Mrs. Ibezim, who expressed worry that the nation has been divided along long religion, political interests, neglect of the sacredness of life, also raised a voice against the devaluation of Naira, high cost of living with stagnant salary, and called on those in authority to work towards the restoration of security, life, and progress of Nigeria. On the state of the state, Mrs. Ibezim lauded Governor Chuku Masoludo and his deputy, Dr. Onyeka Chuku Ibezim, on the massive infrastructural projects in the state and their unalloyed support. God is telling us clearly that we shall not labor in vain. I say we shall not labor in vain. Speaking on the presidential address, the president women's ministry, Enugu province, Mrs. Joyce Chukuma, commended Mrs. Ibezim for what God has been using her to do, which according to her, gave hope of better tomorrow. 
speaking on behalf of the Archbishops and Bishops' wives, the President, Women's Ministry, Abba Province, Mrs. Hope Mwobia, say the theme of the conference is prophetic and calls for prayers, noting that women, noting that women have some responsibilities and roles to play so as to eat the fruit of their labor. Sir and Lady Arinze Obase adopted the address to be a working document in the diocese and beyond while launching of the address presentations by the women to the president of the conference climaxed the event. Most Reverend D. Bezim during the program commissioned a football pitch constructed by St. Stephen's Church Ifitedunu Amaka Chibuzo Okoye ABS News. A day of tribute has been held in honor of the Emeritus Dean, Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion, the late Most Reverend Maxwell Samuel Chukweke Anekwenwa, correspondent, Queen Anibogo reports that event which took place at Poor University, Oka, had in attendance his wife, Mrs. Blessing Anekwenwa, family members, academian, students, staff and management of St Poor University, Knights, members of Anglican community from within and outside Anambra, as well as friends and well-wishers, her report. The late Most Reverend Anikwenwa was also the former Archbishop of Province II and of the Niger and pioneer Bishop of Oka Diocese. He was born in 1940 and answered the ultimate call on 13th March 2023 at the age of 82. In his tribute to the late prelate, the Archbishop Ecclesiastical Province of the Niger and Bishop of Oka Diocese, Most Reverend Alexander Ibezim, recounted his life and times and described him as an astute administrator, good in church planting, and great defender of the Christian faith, who developed Oka Anglican Diocese from nothing to something. Archbishop Ibe Zim, who mentioned his very close relationship with the late prelate, assured that none of his legacies will be forgotten. He has been in Pires. He has kept in faith. And now he has come to wear his crown of righteousness. And he mentioned to me that the very crown of what is taking place in Oka Diocese. In his tribute, the former governor of Anambra State, Mr. Peter Obi, represented by the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic Paul University, Oka, Professor Stella Okuna, consoled the wife, Mrs. Blessing, and Ikwenwa, his children, and the church, noting that while the man of God was alive, he has profound interest in human development, worked diligently in the lost vineyard, and was one of those who told those in power the truth. And even after his time as a governor, he still had a very cordial relationship with him. <laughs> And development. I contributed significantly to good governance in an investment. In his welcome address, the Vice Chancellor, Paul University, Oka Professor Obiora Mwosu, went down memory lane of how the deceased founded the university. The university's effort to honor him by instituting annual lecture series in his name and promised that the university will sustain his legacies. While you are alive, you continue to encourage and support. All university in my administration to keep on the pioneer vice chancellor of the university, Professor Gaius Ibueli, said the late Anikwenwa helped the university to secure a loan of 100 million naira to undergo accreditation, which was successful, and the loan was offset with the 100 million naira gift to the institution for Mr. Pitobi during his tenure as the governor of Anambra State. Justice Njemanze, who represented the chairman, board of trustees of the institution, Dr. Gabriel Toby, disclosed that the late prelates at the last meeting. OT meeting he attended before his demise requested that they should not allow Paul University to die. A business mogul, Chief GUO Okeke, urged all to join him to take up the challenge of granting the request of the deceased, even as he recalled the role the prelate played in ensuring that the boundary between Anambra and Delta State is where it is presently. Governor Chuku Masoludo, represented by his deputy, Dr. Nyekachuku Ibezim, Chairman, Central Planning Committee, Dr. Ima Ezenwaji, traditional ruler of our nature, Igwe Alfred Achebe, represented by the traditional ruler of Iftedunu, Igwe Emeka Iluno, DMGS Old Boys, Council of Night, Diocese of Oka Anglican Communion, among others, also paid tribute to the late Archbishop Queen Anibogo, ABS News. That's the size of our package tonight, but remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. 
subscribe to our YouTube at ABS Television Oka, on Twitter at ABS Radio TV, on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. The main point again, sex slavery couple has been arrested for attempting to bribe Anambra commissioner. More Anambra residents have lauded Governor Soludo on road infrastructure. Senate Bishop Ekwe has asked FG to tackle social economic challenges facing Nigeria. And on the for instance, we told you Human Rights Watch has said Kiev used banned landmines. Here is a special message again. Governor Chukuma Soludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task. 